All right, welcome to week four, day one here of Muse 360. We have moved across quite the spectrum. I am wearing my broken glasses still until my new pair arrives, but you know, we got to see yo. Um, but anyways, uh, we've kind of made it through, um, you know, things sort of chronologically uh, in hip hop music and, and culture and the development, although we've been jumping around, the DJ music kind of jumped, you know, from the, you know, early 80s to, um, you know, the early 2000s. So, you know, we kind of keep this, this class topical, not necessarily chronological. And sometimes within, um, you know, the chronology of, of history and when we do, you know, get in those um, moments, we, we do tend to move to the future, you know, to look at what's been influenced by these certain artistic moments that, you know, um, are important within hip hop music and uh, culture that, you know, um, is important to, to, to address. So uh, with that said, today is one of my favorite days in this class, uh, partly because, well, no, the reason because we get to talk about the music, art, fashion, sample material of the Native Tongues Collective. Um, and why is this, you know, so exciting for me? I mean, this is one of my favorite collectives of artists that I grew up on, you know, um, the music of De La Soul, uh, Tribe Called Quest Heavy. I mean, I'm listening to Low End Theory right now in my truck. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, Black Sheep, uh, Jungle Brothers, you know, Queen Latifah, all that music was just so uh, vital. You know, De, I mean, De La Soul, I leave that out, you know, I mean, just really just shaped um, my youth, you know, so it really has a special place in my heart. And actually, you know, a lot of the music, um, specifically Tribe Called Quest, is actually what got me in the jazz music. So um, that's just important, you know, for me in that in that sense. Uh, I also know too, um, you know, specifically for a lot of you know younger younger people, y'all know who Tribe Called Quest is, uh, or some of you do. You know, uh, I always take a poll, you know, and there's usually. <clears throat> 10 out of 100 people who are Tribe fans, you know, or De La fans, you know. So uh, this music still rings true to this day um, in many ways, lyrically, uh, substance-wise, uh, but musically, you know, the music they, that, that they were uh, producing was just really eclectic, really interesting, really different sounding, specifically than, you know, everything else we, we, we had heard um, up until this point, um, we meaning you in this class, we also mean, you know, consumers and producers of hip hop music uh, and culture. So today we're going to talk about sampling and um, the Native Tongues Collective. It will set us up really nice for one of our forthcoming units in the near future about copyright criminals, which delves into sampling, um, you know, le legal elements in hip hop music and culture. Um, I'd ask you to read and listen to a whole bunch of stuff. And I posted a lot of <clears throat> um, additional, how do, you, how do you want to say, additional bonus readings and viewings, a documentary on De La Soul, you know, uh, an in-depth article on the native tongues. For people who are interested, you know, because I know a lot of y'all who maybe are like, I like De La Soul or I like Tribe Called Quest, you know, um, maybe don't know that much about about the whole collective, Money Love, you know, um, Queen Latifah, you know, Chia Lee, you know, uh, uh, whomever, you know. Um, so, I mean, it gives you a little chance to actually knowledge up on, on some of these people. And maybe you're a fan of De La, but you don't know a ton about them because why the hell would you, you know? Um, that was like my time, you know, which was a long ass time ago. But 